Thank you for joining me today. Again, my name is Chad Bryan. I serve as the Associate Director for Undergraduate Admission at Georgia Tech. And today I'll be presenting on our Transfer Pathway Program requirements. I am joined by several colleagues today who will be managing kind of our Q&A area. Uh, my goal is to answer many of your questions through this presentation. Uh, there may be some time at the end of this session for a brief Q&A, but you can help us by liking any question in the Q&A area. That way uh, we can understand which topics are, are the most popular, but also the most pressing uh, to answer. Uh, as a reminder, we will be emailing a recording of this webinar to you, and it will be posted to our transfer website. Please note that each transfer pathway program at Georgia Tech has its own webpage that outlines eligibility and requirements. So if you've not already, please visit transfer.gotech.edu and click on the transfer pathway program option to review the specific information about your offer. Today's presentation will include information for all pathway programs except for the dual degree engineering, the Regents Engineering, and the Veterans Pathway Program. It is important to us that you know that our pathway programs are optional opportunities for students whose ultimate goal is to earn a degree from Georgia Tech. And we understand students have a lot of great options to choose from, um, but we certainly recommend that you choose the best path for you and your family. But to be clear from the very start, we want students to know that if they meet the requirements of their specific pathway program offer, then they will receive an offer of admission for the specific semester term. I'm pleased to say that Georgia Tech enrolled more than 1,100 transfer students last year, and more than half of them were transfer pathway program applicants. Let's briefly review the agenda for today's webinar. As you can see, I have several topics to cover, and I appreciate your patience as I discuss each topic in detail. We will cover eligibility and entry terms. We'll go over the transfer application, talk about document requirements, uh, the credit hour requirements of your offer, talk about the specific courses that we're asking you to take as part of this offer, as well as how we review our pathway applications. And then lastly, we'll talk a little bit about transfer credit at Georgia Tech, because transfer credit is a little different everywhere that you go, and colleges have different rules and policy around that. So uh, we will talk a lot about that, and then lastly, provide just some final recommendations for you. But the first topic is eligibility and entry terms. Eligible students receive a transfer pathway program offer as part of their first year application decision. And your first year decision letter will also indicate the specific term the offer is valid for. Uh, most of our pathway offers are valid for the fall term only one year after high school graduation. However, the conditional or the legacy pathway is valid for the summer term only one year after high school graduation. Our Atlanta Public Schools pathway, which is our newest one, does provide a two year time period where students can take advantage of it and they can apply for a fall, spring, or summer term. So again, please make sure to refer to your decision letter. Please make sure to refer to your specific page on our website so that you know which term your pathway is eligible for. Uh, one common question we do get about these offers is whether they can be extended to a later term or, an, uh, you know, or advanced to an earlier term. Unfortunately, we do not extend our pathway offers uh, since they are optional opportunities for students to pursue. And we do offer a transfer application opportunity each term. So if a student does not meet pathway requirements, then they can still apply as part of our regular transfer process. And that is not uncommon whatsoever. If you have interest in applying early or after your specific pathway term, please go to our transfer website and you can review our regular transfer application requirements. I think you'll find that our pathway requirements practically mirror the minimum requirements that we ask of all applicants. The next topic we have is the transfer application. Another common question we receive is if a student has to apply again as part of their pathway offer. And the answer is yes, absolutely. Uh, Georgia Tech uses the common application for its first year application process, but we host and provide our own online transfer application. So everyone who's wanting to transfer must complete and submit this application. The first step is to complete and submit an online transfer application at transfer.godtech.edu during the available application period. And I've posted um, the periods on the slide in front of you. 
Uh, our transfer application is typically open for about a month and a half each term. Um, and as you can see, the fall term is available. The fall application is available from January 15th to March 1st. The summer application is available typically from December 1 to January 15th, and our spring application from August 1st to September the 15th. Um, the non-refundable transfer application fee is $75 for domestic students and $85 for international students. Uh, there is a transfer application fee waiver option within the application so that you can upload the form uh, and we can get that reply back to you as quickly as possible. So that is an option once you begin the application. The transfer application really is the best way for students to advocate for themselves. Um, we will have a prerequisite coursework section in the application where you can list the specific coursework that you plan to take to satisfy the course requirements that we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, you can also list your current coursework or your future coursework that you're planning to, to take in case your official transcript does not list your in-progress coursework. You know, colleges are just very different in terms of what they put and what they don't put on an official transcript. Students can list their work experience on the application and they have the option to upload a contribution to community form. Um, students can list past and present campus involvement on this form. Maybe there are significant family contributions or other activities that you want to convey uh, or other extracurricular activities and passions that you have. Uh, we are going to recommend you do this in a resume format, uh, first and foremost, because it's good practice for students, but also our students have an immediate opportunity to share their resumes with employers once they start at Georgia Tech. Uh, we have two very large career fairs, and one of them is in September, and the other one's typically in January. So, you know, they're offered very soon after the fall and spring semesters begin. Uh, the transfer application will require two essays, uh, one about your intended major and the other one you can choose from a variety of different prompts. And there is an additional information section in case students want to provide information, you know, about um, coursework challenges, extenuating circumstances, or just other important if you may, information that you believe provides additional context um, to your application. As you can see, there are several sections where students can share their story with us. So definitely take advantage of each one and invest the time um, to tell us your story and um, to share the details with us. Now let's review the document requirements for a transfer application. The information you list on your transfer application will help create your application checklist that you will see within your admission portal. Uh, an official academic transcript is required from each previous institution uh, as part of our transfer application. And this includes dual enrollment coursework as well. So if you're attending the same institution that you took dual enrollment in, um, then you'll only need that one transcript. But if you're, you know, if you're attending a different institution, then you'll need two separate official transcripts. We do not require high school transcripts as part of our transfer application. We only do require that you list your high school graduation date and some of that related information within the online transfer application. Official transcripts must be sent directly from the institution of Georgia Tech. Sometimes there's confusion about who can send the transcripts to us. Unfortunately, transcripts that are sent to a student and then a student sending to us are considered unofficial. So we really can't use them to complete your application. So please make sure that any request for a transcript is being sent directly from the institution to us. And we do prefer electronic delivery. Most institutions have moved uh, to more of an electronic delivery platform, not all, but um, certainly a question you can ask the registrar's office at the institution you may be headed towards. Um, I will say students not enrolling at a regionally accredited U.S. institution should contact our office for more information about transcript requirements. There may be an additional requirement for a full and credit evaluation, um, but definitely reach out to us if your plans are to enroll outside of the U.S. One common question we do get is whether to list a college multiple times if you've attended uh, more than one campus of a college. So for example, the University of North Georgia here in the state of Georgia has multiple campuses. And so students may attend more than one campus. So when you're filling out your uh, transfer application, you don't wanna list each individual campus on that education section because what it will do is generate a separate transcript request on your checklist. 
If you know that your institution is only going to use one transcript to include all coursework from all campuses, then just list it one time on that application. Otherwise, it could cause some confusion on your checklist um, that we can certainly clean up for you. Um, you just may have to reach out to us to help you with that. Now, in some cases, more so particularly out west, there are some colleges that have multiple campuses where each campus literally generates its own transcript. In those cases, we do want you to list those campuses individually because we understand uh, that those transcripts are not all going to be, you know, uh, included within one. The slide in front of you kind of indicates the document deadline for each of our academic terms. So for fall, we're going to be looking for transcripts to be received by April 15th, for summer, uh, February the 1st, and spring, October the 1st. Uh, and again, you know, as long as you're getting them sent by this time, we'll be able to receive these in time to be able to complete our review and certainly let us know if you're having any trouble getting transcripts to us. But in the age of electronic delivery, um, those are able to get to us pretty quickly. Um, mail documents can take a little bit longer, definitely. Um, so that's why we always prefer electronic delivery. We will send pathway students kind of a, a what we call a grade report form to complete as needed before a final admission decision is made. Uh, we understand that final grades or final transcript may not be available to us prior to making an admission decision. So this form will provide us some necessary grade information, typically like midterm grades um, for those that are coming in summer and maybe final grades for those coming into fall that can assist us in our review process. And then that way we will verify this self-reported information once we receive your final transcript. Please note that any offer of admission is contingent upon the completion of in-progress coursework and confirmation of our pathway requirements. Uh, we do reserve the right if we need to delay a, de a decision until we have the information we need in order to make an informed decision. But our goal is for every pathway program to be successful uh, and we will complete a comprehensive review of each application before any final decision is made. And historically looking at the pathway programs we've had the last you know, decade and those that we've had more recently, um, the success rate of our pathway programs is very high. I would say roughly eight out of every 10 students that are applying as part of a pathway program are receiving an offer of admission. So our goal really is just to try to lay out the requirements as simply as possible, as clearly as possible, so that you know exactly what you need to do as a student uh, in order to receive that offer. The next topic to review is our credit hour requirements for pathway programs. There is a 30 semester or 45 quarter credit hour requirement for each transfer pathway program. If attending fall and spring semesters only, students will need to average at least 15 hours. I will say some students begin the summer after their high school graduation in order to take some prerequisites or they might just want to reduce the number of credits they're taking in fall and spring terms. That's an option, but it's not required. So you do what's best for you. Um, but June 1 is the deadline for all credit hour requirements to be completed and final grades available. So coursework completed after June 1 will not be included within our review. So that's going to be important for you um, to consider. Obviously, in the semester system, most colleges um, for their spring semester are completing in early to mid-May, so it shouldn't be a problem. Credits must be earned after your high school graduation. Um, dual enrollment credit does not count towards this 30 semester or 45 quarter credit hour requirement. So sometimes there's some confusion around that, but we are looking for post high school graduation work. We do understand students are going to have a lot of different college options to choose from. And our recommendation is for you to choose the best college that's the best fit for you and your family. Uh, oftentimes, you know, students or parents will ask us for college referrals or recommendations, and we do not provide recommendations. However, we do encourage students to visit our online transfer equivalency table so that they can view colleges and coursework that we've evaluated for Georgia Tech transfer credit. And we'll talk more about that later on in this presentation and actually kind of give you uh, or show you our transfer equivalency table and what it looks like if you haven't already used it. We know transfer credit mobility is a high priority for all transfer students, and this table can really help students with identifying colleges and coursework uh, where our faculty have already reviewed it. Um, for example, our equivalency table is going to have a lot of colleges and coursework from Georgia than any other state, 
So students should be able to easily identify credit results from Georgia institutions, and they'll see a vast amount of, you know, coursework and credit hours across a number of different subject areas there. But we do also know that every college and every course is not on this table. So it is critical that students kind of take the time to review our recommended resources and really select the next best course that's available to you. Um, certainly utilizing the advisors at the institution you're going to, looking online, and we'll talk a little bit more about other resources that you can um, use throughout this presentation. One thing we have learned from previous Pathway students is that it can be difficult to meet Pathway requirements if attending an institution on a quarter credit system. Um, the, credit, the quarter credit system and the academic calendars do not typically align very well with uh, our deadline and decision dates. So definitely carefully consider that. Ultimately choose uh, the best decision for you and your family. But we have found and we've heard from students that those trying to attend a quarter credit system, unless they're starting kind of that, you know, summer immediately after high school graduation, that it's awfully difficult to meet uh, the credit hour, the document, and the course requirements by that June 1 time frame. Typically, there's a spring quarter that goes well beyond June 1 that kind of prevents that from happening. We do know you've worked hard during your high school career and will be completing AB or IB coursework that can earn you college credit. Uh, please note that these credits do not count towards the 30 semester credit hour requirement. Again, we're looking for post high school graduation coursework, but we will talk about how you can use AP or IB or even dual enrollment coursework to satisfy the course requirements um, that you need as part of your offer. And that's what we're going to talk about next is our course requirements by major chart. So with each pathway offer and for each major here at Georgia Tech, there are specific courses that we're asking you to complete as part of your application. And the best resource for this is our course requirement by major chart that's on our transfer website. You know, as part of that 30 semester credit hour, these are minimum courses we're asking all students to complete. So it's not just you and your pathway offer. These are the same courses we ask every transfer applicant to complete when applying to Georgia Tech. Um, course requirements for all majors include English Composition 1, English Composition 2, Calculus 1, or what we call Differential Calculus at Georgia Tech, and typically One Lab Science. So for all majors, those are definite requirements for all of them. As you look at the chart, you're going to see that some majors have even additional course requirements. Um, you know, most of our majors have a Calculus 2 requirement. Most of our majors are going to have a second lab science requirement. And so, and some of them may even have a sequence requirement with that lab science. So that might require you to take chemistry one and two versus being able to take a chemistry uh, and a biology. But let's look at the chart and I will review an example for you. So again, transfer.godtech.edu, you can easily find this chart on the right hand side. Up at the top, it's highlighted again, all majors require English 1101, 1102, and Calc 1. And then we're going to go down and take a look at business administration. And as we work kind of from the left to the right, you will see um, you know, kind of column headers that indicate specific courses that we're looking for you to have. So for business, you will see in that Calculus 2 column that it's a shaded block. So that is also a required course for business, which we understand at Georgia Tech, we are asking for calculus too. That's probably not going to be the case for a lot of other colleges, but you know, a lot of our majors and what they do are very interdisciplinary. So that foundation of, uh, of calculus is very important. Moving to the right, you'll see under the lab science elective column that there are two shaded blocks divided by a slash. So that means there are two separate lab science requirements uh, for business administration, but the sequence is optional. What that means is that you can take chemistry one and biology one. You're not required to take chemistry one and chemistry two. However, you can do that if you want to. There's just a little bit more flexibility in terms of which lab science you can take as part of this particular major. Uh, now, if you were to go just a few majors up to say biology, you will see if you underneath that same column, the two shaded blocks are together. There's no slash in between. So for biology, Typically, what we would see there is students taking biology one and biology two. The sequence is required, and the sequence typically is going to relate to the major that they're interested in. So hopefully that makes sense uh, to you a little bit, uh, but definitely refer to this chart. What's a, one great thing about this chart is that it's very interactive. 
So you can click on the individual courses that serve as column headers and it will take you to those course descriptions within our GT catalog. You can click on a degree program on the left sidebar. It'll take you directly to our catalog and the degree, the course requirements for that degree. So this is gonna be a tremendous resource for you as you're diving into, okay, what's covered in Calculus 2? You know, what's part of a mechanical engineering degree at Georgia Tech and seeing all the different courses. So as you're deciding where you wanna go and what courses you should be taking, those are easy references and resources for you to, for you to use. Um, so again, if you have not looked at this chart already, please do so online and definitely reach out to us if you have any questions about it. So we've talked a lot about deadlines already, so I just wanted to take a few minutes to kind of summarize the deadlines one more time, just so there's no confusion. Uh, we started with the application kind of deadline. Some people tend to confuse the application and the document deadline. Those are two very separate and different deadlines. So the application does close for summer, January 15th. The application for fall does close on March the 1st. So that does not mean that the application is going to be available all the way through April the 15th. We would simply not have enough time to review all of our applications if that was the case. So that's why we have to be very specific about these deadlines to give ourselves a little bit of time and capacity to be able to complete our review. Uh, you will see the document deadlines again for each term, February 1 for summer, April 15th for fall for those official transcripts. There's really not much more other than the application and the official transcripts that we're asking for. If we do need additional information, we will reach out to you and ask for it. The main thing we typically ask for is probably another transcript. Um, some students will submit one transcript thinking that we'll just take coursework at another institution that's listed on a transcript, um, but we do need the individual official transcripts from each institution. So we're not just gonna take the credit that's shown on one, that maybe you've attended elsewhere. So hopefully that makes sense. Reach out to us if you have questions. That grade report form is something, you know, it's kind of new and it's very specific to our pathway programs because we understand students that are applying for summer are gonna be in progress. or kind of in the middle of their term when we're making these decisions. So what we're gonna be doing is typically around March 1, we'll reach out to our pathway students for summer and we will ask them to basically provide us midterm grades is what we're looking for. So that way we can have that information before we're making final decisions. And um, as you can see um, at the bottom there, the decision release will be sometime in March, typically after we receive that information. However, we wanna give you all the way till you know June 1, it's probably gonna be more till like you know, middle of May that you're completing those courses and then we'll ask um, for those final transcripts. You know, for the fall term, it's a little different story on that grade report. Uh, we have our first decision release for fall on May the 15th. So we would typically reach out to you at May 15th for that grade report form. So you can get that back to us by June 1. Uh, and we do our final decision release for fall in mid-June. So that gives us plenty of time to complete our review. All right, let's talk a little bit about our pathway application review. Again, our review begins once our office receives a complete transfer application. Uh, as a reminder, students applying as part of a transfer pathway program that meet all requirements will receive an offer of admission for the specific term. Um, now, we don't like to use the word guarantee because um, not all students that apply meet all the requirements, but we want to be clear in saying that students that do meet all the requirements will receive this offer of admission. So, um, and then for those that may not miss the mark or miss the mark or not meet requirements, they can apply again as a regular transfer student. It is not uncommon whatsoever for students to apply again for transfer. It's one of the reasons why we offer an opportunity every term, um, because it gives students an opportunity to build on each application. They'll have more credit, they'll have more grades, they'll have more activities, uh, all the different things that we're asking for in the application. So, you know, one application is not going to look the same as the next application. And again, we want to highly recommend the applicants use all sections of the application that we talked about a little bit earlier so that you can provide as much information to us as part of this review process. Um, academic major, uh, students have the opportunity to select one of 36 majors of study on the transfer application and any offer of admission from Georgia Tech is specific to the major and term listed on the application. 
So um, we do not have a secondary major listing. So any offer will be for that one major you list on the application. And we are not gonna change the major once you've submitted your transfer application. So please take the time to carefully consider the major that you're choosing. Um, so that way um, we can make sure to review your application with that, with that major lens in mind. Course requirements by major. Uh, we talked about the application having a prerequisite section. That's gonna be a great opportunity for you to basically just kind of detail out, almost kind of do your own self audit of, okay, I'm completing this course for the English Composition 1. I'm doing this course for the English Composition 2. This is what I'm taking for Calc 1, Lab Science 1, Lab Science 2. Uh, and that helps us during our review. So if we have any questions, we can refer to that. So you'll see the opportunity to fill that out on the transfer application. Portfolios are only required for um, students that are selecting some majors within our College of Design. So it'll prompt you within the application uh, for an additional essay that's optional. And then you have the opportunity to upload a portfolio, which we do highly recommend. Um, our College of Design majors are really the only major where uh, we have some faculty involvement within that review process. Our College of Design faculty actually do review those portfolios as part of our review process. So. Um, uh, and I know that's going to be a little different depending upon which pathway offer that you have. And now let's talk a little bit about grade point average because there are some GPA requirements that are attached to our pathway programs. It's pretty much the same GPA re requirement across all of them, which is an overall 3.3 GPA and a 3.3 math and lab science GPA. Uh, the overall GPA is going to include coursework taken at all previous institutions and it's gonna include dual enrollment coursework as well. And then the math and lab science GPA is gonna include calculus level and higher math and lab science courses. And sometimes there's a question or confusion about what is a lab science course? Well, let's talk about it a little bit. A lab science course really includes the subject areas of physics, chemistry, biology, and then certain earth and atmospheric sciences. Sometimes the EAS subject area can be a little confusing. Um, but the main thing is that each lab science must total at least four semester credit hours and include lecture and lab components. So anything less than four semester credit hours will not receive transfer credit at Georgia Tech. When you go and visit our equivalency table, um, you'll see this a little bit because oftentimes a lot of our lab sciences, you'll see the equivalency is, is placed on the lab and not necessarily on the lecture. And colleges are gonna be very different in how they offer you as a student a lab science course. Um, some of them separate it uh, and they have one course code for the lecture and then another course code for the lab, while other colleges will blend them together and just have one course that's for semester. So it's going to look a little bit different depending upon the subject area, depending upon where you go. But just know that those are the things that we're looking for in terms of what is a lab science. Um, computer science is not going to be considered a lab science for us. They're really physics, chemistry, biology, and certain EAS. Uh, how we calculate the math and lab science GPA is simple. Um, sometimes I, I think students feel like there's a magic formula here when really we want you to be able to do it yourself um, so that you can do a self audit of your application as much as possible before you submit it to us. Um, so we add up all the total quality points from all eligible coursework and we divide it by the number of credit hours. So for an example, if a student has an A minus grade for a chemistry course, and this course is four semester credit hours, then the student would receive 16 quality points and four hours semester credit. So um, we do not add or subtract quality points for plus minus grades and A grade receives the same weight, whether it is an A minus uh, or an A, A plus. So literally we just add up all the, the quality points divided by the credit hours and, and that's the GPA. We wanna keep it simple so it's something that you can do yourself. So there's really you know, no confusion um, around um, what that's going to look like when we review your application. And just as a reminder, again, dual enrollment grades are included within our GPA calculations. Um, the students are taking these courses to receive college credit, uh, so that's why we do include those within our GPA calculation. Let's talk a little bit about transfer credit. The Georgia Tech catalog is the official resource for our transfer credit policy, our course descriptions, and our degree requirements. 
Uh, like I said before, our course requirement chart will link you to a lot of that, uh, but you can go to catalog.gatech.edu and easily be able to find degree programs and course descriptions. Our basic policy is to allow credit for courses completed with a C grade or higher at accredited colleges and universities within the U.S. Uh, coursework outside the U.S. is evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis, uh, and there is no cap on transfer credit hours at Georgia Tech. However, students are required to complete a minimum of 36 credit hours for a Georgia Tech degree. Credit by exam, uh, we do welcome the opportunity to honor any credit by exam award that you've received from your current institution. That's gonna include AP, IB, SAT2, and possibly A-level coursework. However, it is your responsibility as a student to request this credit by exam on your official transcript. And that's the best way for us to see that and to be able to honor that. Because ultimately when it comes down to it, our registrar's office has to be able to see that credit on the transcript in order to award that to you and award that towards that degree that you're seeking. Uh, so on the transcript, we would be looking for the course name, the code, and the credit hours for each credit by exam award itemized so that we can be able to review it and, and, and provide the credit um, that we can. If we are unable to see that credit by exam award, then we may have to request you know, official scores from you. And this can get a little confusing because um, you know, the school requirements for credit by exam vary by college. And at Georgia Tech, I know our school requirements are going to be a little more rigorous than maybe other institutions. So that's why it's important that you as a student know what's getting put on your transcript, because we want to honor that credit and we want to award that credit for you. But if we don't see it on the transcript, then we have to find another official means to be able to receive it. And that normally is only going to be through, you know, official AP scores or IB scores and things like that. And if there's any kind of inconsistency regarding what we can award for our scores versus your prior institution, that's where it can get a little complicated. So most colleges do include this information on their transcript, and it's always good as a student to know uh, what's gonna be listed there. Just get an extra copy for yourself so you know exactly what we're seeing um, when we're evaluating your transcript. Uh, I will say colleges are seemingly putting less and less information on the transcript. So um, that does make it a little bit difficult for us, um, but we understand that at the same time. So uh, reach out to us if you have any questions regarding that. Uh, as a reminder, again, dual enrollment and credit by exam awards can satisfy those course requirements by major. So if you're taking an AP Lit uh, or you took AP Calculus BC and you earned a score high enough where you got Calculus 1, then we want to honor those awards. Uh, okay, so we're not asking you to repeat those courses as part of the 30 semester credit hours. Uh, we want you to be able to continue on, progress further, and take the next class um, towards degree completion. Online coursework, obviously, you know, 2020 was a very different year altogether for all of us. Um, so our registrar's office has updated its policy to, um, to honor online credit. Uh, during the year 2020 and into even 2021. Um, however, it's, it's, it's important for you as a student to know what the online you know, credit policy is for any institution that you attend. And the best way that you can see that on our end is to go to oscar.gatech.edu. It's also where the transfer equivalency table is. You'll see it right in front of you in terms of our, <clears throat> our online uh, transfer credit policy. Official credit evaluations. Uh, we will complete a, an official credit evaluation once a student receives an offer of admission. So this credit evaluation is actually completed by our registrar's office. And um, so and they have to work with our academic colleges and serve as kind of the authority on transfer credit at Georgia Tech. Now, once we kind of extend an offer of admission, sometimes we do have to ask students to submit a credit evaluation to our registrar's office, um, depending upon the coursework. Because as I said uh, earlier, we don't have every college, we don't have every course on our equivalency table. So for the ones that we don't, uh, our faculty will need to review that coursework in order to reply with the credit that you can, be, you can receive for it. So uh, big tip, recommendation always is students always keep your course syllabi um, as this information can be very important and can be the difference between getting credit for a course and not getting credit you know, for a course. 
uh, we will notify students at the point of admission regarding this and let you know what courses you might have to upload information for. Now I've referenced it a lot over the course of this presentation, but we're going to talk a little bit more about the transfer equivalency table. So again, if you've never visited it, you can go to oscar.gatech.edu to follow along. It lists all coursework and institutions that we've currently evaluated for transfer credit at Georgia Tech. Um, students can search transfer credit by institution, subject area, and term. So be sure to select the correct term when you're performing your query. Um, the correct term for all queries is going to be C equivalent data for all terms. And you'll understand in just a minute when I pull up an example, because you want to see the full history of the evaluation for that class. So on the slide there, you can see kind of an example. Uh, we are looking at Georgia State University, which is, you know, a great U.S. institution and a partner institution of ours as well. And uh, you have the ability to choose one or several subjects there. Uh, in terms of level, always select the undergraduate level. And for term, always scroll down to the very bottom and select that C equivalent data for all terms. Again, you want to know the full history of that course evaluation because things change from time to time. You know, a math 1500 may have changed to a math 1250. Um, um, so some things in terms of when they're effective um, will, will change over time because every college changes courses, they change curriculum, they change course numbers. And um, you help us by understanding some of these changes. And so we can keep our database as updated as possible. After you select Get Courses, you will be shown the results of your query. Transfer course results indicating the numbers 1XXX or 2XXX means there's not an exact Georgia Tech equivalent course. So the output is basically going to show you on the left side the institution you're currently attending and the course information there. And then on the right side uh, of the spreadsheet, it will show you the Georgia Tech equivalent. So if the course number on our side is showing like 1XXX, that means there's not a specific course that we can tie it to. We might be able to use that course as like elective hours, but there's not a course that we physically offer that we can, can give you credit for. Uh, in some cases, you might see the result that indicates department evaluation is required. Uh, that's again where you might have to upload the credit evaluation and we'll let you know about that uh, at the point of admission. And then in some cases, it's clearly stated that no Georgia Tech credit is awarded. So again, this is going to be a great resource for you um, as you're uh, kind of looking at colleges, looking at coursework, looking at colleges and coursework that we've already evaluated that we've gotten students from um, as you're making your college choice. All right, I wanted to just share a few final reminders and some recommendations as I wrap up this presentation. And then uh, it looks like we'll have a little bit of time for some Q&A. So if you haven't already, be thinking of questions that maybe I haven't answered as of yet, and I will do my best uh, to answer those with the time that we have remaining. Um, and again, thank you to my colleagues who have been managing the Q&A area. And the first recommendation we do have is basically just to review the requirements. Oftentimes, we get a lot of questions for students about the Pathway Program offers, and our first recommendation is always to go to their Pathway Program page. Uh, we spend a lot of times trying to um, articulate the requirements, put FAQs there, put recommended resources there. Um, so please, if you have not visited that page, go ahead and do so and pay close attention to the deadlines that we've covered today so you do not miss out on your pathway opportunity. Two, I mentioned earlier that you may want to consider summer. You know, 30 hours within two semesters, you know, can seem challenging to some students, or they may just want to provide a little bit of a buffer for themselves for fall and spring. So starting summer right after high school graduation um, and taking one class, you know, potentially two, can potentially help lessen the load for fall and spring. Uh, I will say some students, uh, do pursue or enroll in a late short summer if they know they're going to have prerequisites to taking calculus one or a physics or a lab science. That's going to, you know, be the case for a lot of our engineering majors. Uh, anything that might require a physics, you know, a lot of times there's a prerequisite to being able to jump into calculus-based physics directly. So that's something you may want to 
um, to check into the institution or ask them questions about. Uh, we have kind of learned from students before that, you know, obviously if they're not able to complete the prerequisite coursework during the summer and they're taking, let's say, pre-calc in the fall and then they're taking calculus one in the spring, but their particular major has a calculus two requirement, that means they wouldn't be meeting the requirement by the June one. So we just want to um, have you look at all resources and make the best decision for you, but certainly do your research, you know, explore college websites, you know, ask about credit by exam policies to understand how your AP, your IB, uh, or any CLEP or subject test results can give you credit. Uh, most colleges have a clearly defined, you know, transfer credit policy within their, their catalog as well. And most colleges have some type of online transfer equivalency too. So, you know, be sure to ask these questions as you're, you're looking into colleges and checking out college websites. And then again, ask questions. Um, there are a number of different areas where we recommend you ask questions about. One is that transfer credit policy, you know, especially as it relates to online credit, you know, as it relates to lab science credit, you know, um, credit by exam. You know, is this information going to be listed on your official transcript? We kind of covered that already a little bit through this presentation. But you want to know what's on the transcript, what you're being awarded. Um, because ultimately our goal is to provide you as much transfer credit as possible. And I, I imagine on your end and on your family, the idea is you want to reduce or eliminate any credit that's not gonna be transferable. Uh, and that gets difficult the more credit you have because every college doesn't offer the same coursework. So knowing what you have and knowing what you have credit for and how it um, translates into your degree requirements is, are always great questions to ask. You know, thirdly, you know, is the college you're considering a quarter or a semester credit system? You know, look at the academic calendars. When are they going to start? When are they going to end? You know, knowing our deadlines and dates, we understand that our pathway offer may not be the best option for every student. We simply just want to provide the opportunity and, and let students make the best decision for themselves. You know, again, I'll, I'll reiterate the prerequisite coursework. Given that a lot of our majors require calculus too, uh, and physics, you know, determine if you're going to have to take additional prerequisites such as pre-calc or another introductory physics before you can go into a calculus-based physics. Um, that's where that summer can come into play or another option that you might want to explore. And again, always try to get a copy, uh, keep a copy of your, your syllabi as well as really your transcripts that you're sending to any institution so you're aware of what's being um, shown on your behalf, you know, in terms of the credit, in terms of the coursework, in terms of just general information as well. And then last but not least, coursework availability. Um, you know, I, I mentioned before that oftentimes students and parents will ask us where to go in terms of colleges, and that's not really an answer we can provide. But what we do say is, well, look at their program. You know, you know, if you're interested in engineering, you know, how large is their program? How how often are you going to be able to get the course that you're looking for that you need uh, to complete this pathway program? Um, sometimes the size of the program will depend, you know, um, you know, the frequency of the coursework availability will depend on the size of the program. Um, also, in terms of the opportunities you may have as a student, like can they provide co-op opportunities or internship or, you know, research, things like that. These are all great questions to ask as you're kind of compiling all this information. And then again, just a final reminder about the, the syllabi. Please don't ever throw away a course syllabus. You never know how that's gonna help you because even saving yourself three credit hours or one credit hour might open up the opportunity for something else as part of your undergraduate experience. It could be a study abroad. It could be another course in, a, in another area that you're interested in. So I hope these uh, final recommendations are helpful to you. I uh, really appreciate your time in terms of joining me today and learning about our transfer pathway program requirements. Um, we look forward to reviewing a future transfer application from you. And we, as a reminder, will be emailing this webinar recording out to you and posting it to our transfer website. So at this time, we've got just over 10 minutes. So I'm going to pause and uh, check with my colleagues for any questions that I did not answer that we can answer during this period. So thanks for your patience and I'll um, be back shortly.
Okay, the first question I have here is dealing with the course requirements and just kind of reiterating when those course requirements need to be completed. So the course requirements um, need to be completed by that June 1 timeframe. So if you have a pathway offer that's for fall, it needs to be completed and final grades available by June 1. So typically if you're in a semester system school, uh, that semester for spring is gonna end you know, early to mid part of May. So we're wanting you to get us that transcript as soon as possible in May, or hopefully at the very latest June 1, because if we're releasing decisions June 15th, that gives us just enough time to be able to complete our review and release that decision for you. Uh, for our conditional pathway offers that are gonna be coming in summer, we understand we're gonna be making decisions midway through a term. So that's where that grade report form uh, becomes really important. So we'll ask for your midterm grades, We'll receive that information, make our decision, uh, and then certainly be able to verify that information with that final transcript that would come to us again by that June 1. So we want to afford every student, you know, that entire spring semester to complete the requirements uh, because we know um, you will need that time uh, in order to accrue the 30 semester credit hours that you will need. You know, typically for Georgia Tech, our summer semester starts you know, mid to the latter part of May. So it can be a quick transition for those that are completing spring semester. Um, students are not required to go full semester during summer. Uh, we do have a full semester term, kind of a late short semester term. So students, if they want to, can start part-time uh, during the summer. So there's a number of different options available to students that, that start during our summer semester. Another question I see here is about major changes. So, you know, within the application, we give you the opportunity to list one major. Our offer of admission is for that specific major and for that term. It is challenging to change your major at Georgia Tech uh, because we're at such a high capacity uh, with many of our majors. Um, so there is an opportunity in most, in most cases after you've completed a certain amount of coursework. Typically, it could be a semester. In some cases, it could be longer than a semester where you can apply for a change of major, but it would require the approval of both the department you're leaving and the department that you're arriving. So we wanna carefully, you know, carefully consider the major that you're choosing there. It can be challenging to change majors at Georgia, I would say especially within the College of Engineering and CS, just given uh, the high capacity um, those colleges and, and specific majors are at right now. So I have another question here about summer. Um, summer is a great opportunity to start at Georgia Tech. Uh, we understand that sometimes it may be a unique first semester for students to start, but at Georgia Tech, um, we're excited about the opportunity that summer you know, presents our students. So uh, as I said, uh, I will use our conditional pathway students as an example. That's an offer that's specific to summer. So, you know, students would be applying by that January 15th, you know, typically around March 1, uh, we will be uh, reaching out to them for midterm grades, you know, looking to get that information back definitely before the end of March. So that way we can make uh, decisions well in advance of our summer semester starting, uh, which is the mid to latter part of May. Uh, again, you know, students aren't required to go necessarily full semester. Um, they'll probably find more course availability on that full semester format, but it's a great semester to start. Um, I would say, you know, a quarter of our incoming, you know, first year class is coming in the summer along with our transfer. So it's a growing population on campus and it can really provide um, a great advantage for students that once they start in summer, they'll already have that um, kind of experience in term and have priority registration for fall uh, and that can really help them kind of going forward and just kind of getting the lay of the land before they jump into a maybe a full-time uh, course load. You know with that again I just want to thank everyone for their time today. Um, hope you're excited about this pathway opportunity. Uh, again we will be sending out this recording to you uh, hopefully in the next week or two, and we'll be posting it to our website. Our transfer website is going to be your best resource as you're kind of preparing for your pathway opportunity. Uh, transfer.godtech.edu on the right-hand side, 
you will see recommended resources, you will see the course requirement chart, you will see the option to look at your specific pathway offer, and certainly uh, reach out to us as you have questions. You know, one thing I do want to clarify before we end is, obviously, uh, we understand that um, you know, every college and every course is not on our equivalent fee table, um, and ultimately, we are not really in a position to be able to advise students on specific coursework at other institutions. So that's why we want to provide our course descriptions, you know, our degree requirements, uh, but certainly want to impress upon students to talk with the advisors uh, at the institution they're going with, um, look over their courses and their course structure, and just really choose the next best course that's available to you. Uh, our goal within all of these programs is for them to be very successful. So we're always going to give students the benefit of the doubt in terms of the course for they're selecting because we understand the challenges, especially this last year, in terms of trying to find and select and get the coursework that they need. So, you know, utilize the application to let us know any challenges that you may experience uh, and just do know that we're going to review everything before any final admission decision is made. So we really look forward to reviewing your future transfer application. Uh, wish you all the best in this upcoming year. And just, uh, you know, uh, really appreciate your continued interest in Georgia Tech. So thanks again. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and go Jackets.